I met Joe, my co-founder, and both of us had this dream that we were going to do something that would make an impact in the world. We didn't even know what that meant. I think a key to, th thing to learning is having mentors, and a key the thing to having a mentor is being shameless. Start with the perfect experience with just one person. Get that right and then figure out how to scale something great. He said, Brian, startups die of suicide, not homicide. All great companies that had a downfall, they died of self-inflicted wounds. Everything around you was designed by somebody else. If it's not, if it's man-made, you can redesign the world you live in. If you know those binders you put baseball cards in, kids with baseball cards, we put credit cards in those. We had sleeves of credit cards. Five star is what people expect, but to build something people love, you almost need to do something more than they expect. Brian Chesky, the co-founder of Airbnb, has led a remarkable life filled with entrepreneurial spirit and innovative ideas. His journey began in New York in 1981, where he was raised in a family that valued creativity and learning. Chesky attended the Rhode Island School of Design, where he studied industrial design, fostering his passion for creating meaningful experiences. In 2007, Chesky, along with his friends Nathan Blasharczyk and Joe Gebbia, founded Airbnb, a platform that allowed people to rent out their living spaces to travelers. This idea revolutionized the hospitality industry, providing travelers with unique and affordable accommodations while empowering hosts to monetize their extra space. Chesky's positive aspects shine through his creativity and vision. He demonstrated a keen understanding of the sharing economy, fostering a sense of community and cultural exchange among Airbnb users worldwide. His ability to connect with people and create a sense of belonging contributed to the platform's global success. However, Chesky's journey was not without challenges. Airbnb faced legal issues and controversies related to regulatory concerns and user safety. These challenges forced Chesky to navigate complex legal landscapes and implement stringent safety measures to address these concerns. Despite these hurdles, Chesky's determination and leadership helped Airbnb overcome these obstacles and continue its growth trajectory. Chesky's contributions to the world of finance were significant as well. Under his leadership, Airbnb went public in December 2020 amid the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The company's successful initial public offering, IPO, highlighted Chesky's ability to adapt to changing market conditions and make strategic decisions that benefited both the company and its investors. In conclusion, Brian Chesky's life and journey reflect his resilience, creativity, and determination. While facing challenges, he remained committed to his vision, transforming Airbnb into a global phenomenon that reshaped the travel and hospitality industry. His positive aspects, including his innovative mindset and ability to connect people, have left a lasting impact on the world of finance and entrepreneurship. I think AI allows us eventually to have the equivalent of like an AI coach to help you become an even better host. I think additionally, you know, to our incredibly strong network effect, we have a lot of information about people. We have more than half a billion reviews that have been left on Airbnb. We know a lot about travelers. And I think instead of having a search problem like Google, we could have more of a matching problem. There is not one definitive right answer you come to Airbnb. So I think that like our innovative culture to be able to design these incredibly powerful interfaces to be able to match you to one of a kind experiences, I think that's gonna be our sweet spot. In 2020, we let off 25% of our workforce, which is a lot. First thing I did is I wrote this letter that was very transparent. We went step by step about what happened, how we got here. We gave people a large amount of severance, a large amount of health care in a pandemic. But we did some really unique things. Like we created an alumni directory. So if anyone got laid off, they could opt in for us publishing the information in a directory and other recruiters could reach out to them. And I believe we had like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people visit their profiles and a large amount of people got other offers. So I was proud of how we handled it. I think with layoffs, you should just make sure you do more than expected, you're incredibly compassionate, and you allow people to leave the company with dignity. We've seen a lot of founder CEOs step back, whether it's Amazon, Google, Twitter, Pinterest, Slack, you're still here. I think when I was starting out, I think I was afraid to run a giant company. But the thing that's most surprised me is I have more excitement today than I did when I was in Y Combinator. Mm -hmm. The job today, 
as a public company CEO is more fun really? than the job as a private company CEO. I feel like I often hear the opposite. You often do because, you know, by the time you run a public company, you're trying to appease shareholders, you're trying to appease employees, you're negotiating. I stopped obsessing over making money and we ended up generating three and a half million in free cash flow. Mm. There's a paradox there. I like to tell entrepreneur, think of the growth of your company. You have to grow faster than that. And if you don't grow fast in your company, then your company is going to be pulling you and then you're going to eventually be holding it back. And I remember my board member, Ken Chenault, who's the CEO of Amex, he was CEO during 9-11 in the financial crisis 2008. And he basically said, I've been through two of the biggest crises in my lifetime and this is 10 times bigger than either of them. He said, this is your defining moment as a CEO. And I think I had lessons that have now been seared in my brain and I'm never going to forget them. What are the lessons? So the first thing I learned is who people really are. The good news is that the vast majority of people turned out to be great people. I learned to focus the entire company and point them, every single person, to one direction. And I learned to stop apologizing about how I want to run the company. Because you hire people and they come from Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and they bring their way with them. And what I realized I was doing was trying to find some midpoint between how I wanted to run the company and how they wanted to run the company, which actually made everyone miserable. Mm. It's like I had to go into wartime mode. And the crazy thing was, is as I took more command, more control, became more decisive, more bossy, so to speak, I think people were happier because they had clarity and direction. There's like a bunch of stages of startup. The first stage is, I think, survival, meaning like you're not meant to survive. So you start this company, you have this idea, and everyone's telling you you're crazy. You can't get any money. You can't raise any money. Your co-founders, you don't even know if everyone's going to keep working on it. And so I call that like survival. And like not dying is working on it the next day. It's like no one actually kills you. You just fade away. You stop working on it. The second stage is probably like firefighting. And so then you like are firefighting. Oh my God, we're growing. I need to hire these people. I don't know what to do. And then once you get through the survival and some of the initial firefighting, You've gained the luxury of having all these other people now decide to copy you and try to destroy you. Now it's existential threats. Over the years, you've really emphasized, you know, the values of Airbnb, whether it's community or connectedness. Yeah. What does it take to make something that people really love? When I joined Y Combinator, the first day they give you a t-shirt. It's a great t-shirt mm -hmm. and it says, make something people want. And if you get an exit, they send you a black t-shirt and it says, I made something people want. And that was something that always stuck with me. And I think the way you make something that people want is you have to care about people. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand people. Mm -hmm. We did this thing 10 years ago. I named it Snow White after the movie Snow White. Snow White was basically the advent of the storyboard. Mm -hmm. Walt Disney's one of my heroes. This film was so long, he had to storyboard it. And I said, why don't more businesses do that? Why don't businesses understand who their customer is, storyboard the experience, and then try to put themselves in the shoes of that person, and just every single opportunity is a detail that you can perfect. Talk about being in the details. Start with the perfect experience with just one person. Get that right, and then figure out how to scale something great. He said, Brian, startups die of suicide, not homicide. Mm -hmm. All great companies that had a downfall, they died of self-inflicted wounds. Everything around you was designed by somebody else, if it's, it's man-made. You can redesign the world you live in.